Welcome back y'all. Today we are going to do a pair of cowboy boots. We have gotten a lot of requests and messages and customers coming to our store asking about Tecovas. Well we've got a pair. It's actually a guy that I know and he was bringing his pair in and he was saying hey let's see some half soles on them. But I said hey let's just go ahead and give it the works and do a full sole on them and that way while we're uh, taking it all apart we can uh, give a little inside review and see what the insides of these look like. Tacova is one of those brands that's come jumping on the scene in the last several years. So most of the Tacova's marketing has really kind of capitalized on that direct consumer like a lot of the brands that we've been talking about. And I've heard them on the radio uh, recently. Most of their stuff has been online. You know, you go to a website and next thing you know they're following you. And uh, But the, the boots I've heard a lot of good things about. And so when we started getting them in here, we wanted to really see what they were like and I've been impressed with them so far I'm actually wanting to get me a pair of Tecovas um, and so this is Nashville I'm a boot guy I know a lot of y'all always see me in my flip-flops well that's because it's just uh, got out of the 90s and it's October but now that's starting to get some cool weather I'm actually wearing my boots today uh, they're not Tecovas but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll get me a pair of those soon so let's get started on these things all right, so um, here's where we actually started prepping it for a half sole. But he wanted some JR half soles, but we said, hey, let's go ahead and um, if you can get JR, let's put a full sole on it and make a video out of it. And uh, just a little disclaimer, remember we are working shops. If you hear the, the phone go off or the doorbell go off, then it is what it is. So just out, out of the chute here, we can see that they have some cork in here. And a lot of it, you know, comes off when we actually pull the sole off. So, you know, it, it is usually filled up. But they actually use cork. And um, there's some brands out there. We work in a lot of Luke Casey's. And um, a lot of the Luke Casey's that we work on, they don't have anything. It's pretty much just the leather sitting on, uh, on the insole. Um, but they actually do use cork to fill that cavity up. So uh, here's the top lift. It's pretty thick. Um, they do just glue it on. They don't. They don't use nails, but that's you see a lot of that in um, factory produced shoes. As I'm pulling this, you see all these layers starting to pull apart. One thing about cowboy boots. Um, it's a lot harder to start at the bottom and try to get this block off like it is a, a regular dress shoe. So we're just going to go ahead and pull chunks off. You can see when you do that, you start to get down to the tips of the nails, and that's actually what's causing the leather to come apart. But we can, if we have to, we'll just pull them apart and put them back together when we need to. All right, so what I did is since we actually started to prep this for a half sole, um, when we're putting a JR, we usually like to have the, the JR logo in the center. It's kind of hard when I'm actually missing the sole because we kind of assembly line this and the guy already took it and threw the, the fourth part of the sole away. So I just got some, some tape and made a little front section here so we can, that'll give me an idea of what the original sole was. Now, these boots are a half welt. Uh, for those that are not familiar with cowboy boots, boots usually come in two different welt styles. A half welt, they come around just behind the joints here, or they have a three quarter. And those are the ones that if you flip it over, you usually see it's stitched all the way from underneath the heel all the way around. A half welt, will be, like I said, will be a welted and stitched from just behind the joints. And then through the waist here, it's usually got wood pegs or brass nails or, and or both of them. Um, and then unlike some shoes that go straight to um, no welt right here where it's just, you can see it, it's just leather, just the sole leather, it then comes back up and sits on a seat. Because some shoes that do this, they just continue strictly with the, the, um, the, the sole leather back here to create the seat. But most cowboy boots will have a ran as well. So it actually goes from like two layers to one layer to two layers.
Cowboy boots are very big on nails. They like to use a lot of nails. Okay, so we got the remainder of the sole off here. Still got the four part and my little pattern, tape pattern. As you can see through the waist here, they use mostly wood pegs and they've got a few little select um, brass tacks through there, but pegs, very traditional uh, as our nails, but um, they use mostly wood. Um, as we can see right here, their seat is actually plastic or um, the shank that they use they use a metal shank most cowboy boots that i know of use metal shank um, and then to create that little bit of a fiddle waist they um it actually looks like it's dipped because this actually like slips inside um, it's, it's actually co coated in plastic to create that little fiddle waist up there so i don't know if they like dip it into something a mold and when it dries it comes out in one big solid sheet but uh, i've actually never seen this on a boot before it appears that their insole is actually just a veg tan leather which is very nice i like that it feels like it and just by looking in the holes there's a lot it's a lot of fibers in there so it, yeah that would lead me to think that this actually is a solid leather insole very nice um, they use these really large tacks to hold over on the on when they last it, they they reinforce it with these big nails. I like that as well. Just gives a lot of stability to the waist, which uh, they try to keep you know as slender as possible on these style boots. Uh, I do wish that they would used um, they would have used um, leather for this, but that's not that big a deal. I don't know if you can see it, but every time I flick one of these out, dust is like coming out. He wears his boots hard, but I wear mine hard. It's kind of the kind of what you use boots for. Quickest way to tear up a welt is to just keep stitching over on top of each other. So a little bit different than a typical shoe. Normally we would actually just go ahead and glue this whole thing onto a shoe and put on the press, wheel it around, make sure that the welt and all that's seated really well, and then we would trim it. Um, with a shoe that doesn't have a welt or something to guide, you gotta have a template. And with boots, um, it's a lot easier to actually draw your pattern on here and then with the seat is, I mean, I mean through the waist and around to the seat, we go ahead and pre-cut the sole. I leave a little bit of excess up here. That way that, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly on. You got a little bit of wiggle room. And then all this part up here is actually where the welt's gonna be. So um, I can then trim this. But this part, we need pre-cut. So this part right here is through the waist. Here's our heel, and here's gonna be our forefront, I mean our forepart under the ball of foot. Through the waist is where you're gonna have your, your tacks, your, um, uh, your wood pegs, and so it also has to be able to conform and mold over that fiddle. So some people will actually take it down over on this side. Um, I think it looks better just to leave it smooth on the, on the top side. And so we actually have to make this part right here a little bit thinner so that it can mold a little bit easier because if we leave it like this, then it's actually gonna like kind of flare and then kind of go down at an angle and it doesn't look good and it actually won't fit the boot as well. So to give just kind of a guide,
Now, I don't want to go too far up here because then you're actually scabbing into what the part that's going to be stitched onto the welt. And then I just like to scaff down to the thickness to give myself an idea. Um, I don't want to go past this because this is the thickness that I want. And then I can actually take a sander and sand this metal portion down. Believe it or not, I'm not going to cut my thumb because my hand is actually just sitting on here and I'm really just more moving my hand. I'm not pulling the knife, I'm just literally moving my hand. So, for those out there that are cringing, think I'm going to slice my thumb off. I promise you I will not. Alright, so that gives me a good guide and now I can just take this middle chunk off with a sander. All right, so we have curved the soles here, and that was part of the whole reason for us to uh, scab this down a little bit, make it a little bit thinner than the rest of the sole, is we can mold it a lot easier, and um, it, that tapered look looks a lot better. So that's been molded, we wet it, put it on, sit and let it dry. That's gonna make putting it on uh, and keeping that shape a whole lot better. And put our glue on, glue on the boot, let's stick these soles. So when we groove these out, a lot of times it's to you know groove it, it's actually pushing up the sides of the leather. So there's a little lip right here, and that allows us to put the stitch in. But we go over it with a oak dowel, and it smooths this out and pushes those back down, and uh, kind of hides the stitches just a little bit to give them a little bit of protection. A lot smoother now, and it covers up a little bit of the stitches. What I think we'll do is when we finish the soles, we'll come back through and do the inner line with brass. Just give it a little fun look. All right, so what we're gonna have to do next is sand this down very lightly with some really high grit sandpaper 
and but what it's going to do is it's actually going to take a little bit of this crust off it's going to be a whole lot lighter a lot of shoemakers will actually glass this whole thing off and then refinish it with with uh waxes some people just leave it the, the original crust on they like the color so we're going to leave this up here the way it is and then we'll just have to kind of blend the two together when we color up here we'll have to use some different stuff and just kind of blend the two together so it'll be a little bit darker through here but it'll look good So we're gonna have to uh, do something a little bit different when we're starting to put our stacks back on uh, cowboy boots. Uh, unlike a traditional dress shoe that's got a little, you know, a smaller heel, most traditional cowboy boots have a higher stack, unless it's a roper, which is closer. It's you know sometimes it's a little bit lower. Uh, sometimes it's about the size of a dress shoe. But um, in these, we have to um, with these we have to actually make it mold over the shank. So anytime you get leather stack leather and you've got multiple layers it's very hard to bend one you can bend two you know it's a little stiffer and then with a bunch of them on there you can't bend it at all so when you take those stacks of leather off a lot of times they lose the shape of that traditional bend and you have to get it back to this one so uh what the, what we normally like to do is take off the bottom two layers of the stack and put that one layer on put a little bit of glue on it and that will curve and then we'll glue the next one single layer on and it'll be a little less curve and then it gets to where it's flat enough that I can take those remainder stacks and put it on before I nail them. So that's how we can get our stacks to have a solid curve along with uh, almost like an airtight seal right along the sole. So let's do that. All right, so I like to label these. When you start taking blocks apart, it's very easy to get confused of which one went with right foot, left foot but this one piece put a little glue on there you can see it's perfectly sealed but this got a little bump right here so this next one which i've actually already got glue on um it'll sit down and it'll take a little bit of that bump off and then the next layer but once i put this one on it's pretty flat enough that i can go ahead and take the remainder of the stack and put them on there and then i can just sand a little bit and then i'll put my nails from the inside so All right guys, so we finished up this pair of Tacova boots. I hope you liked it. Just my little thoughts, you know, summary of uh, Tacova boots. For a boot that's in that two to $300 price range, this is right up there with much higher boots. We get a lot of boots in here and um, a lot of Luke Casey's, you know, a lot of Justin's, a lot of Dan Post. Um, and for the, the calf skin, the basic calf skin boots that they're selling, I don't have a lot of experience with the new exotic skins that they've just released. So if I get some of those in here, I'd love to you know, do a review over those. But for the calf skin, these things are fantastic. The, 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 the leather itself is already very supple. There's very little break in. And um, I do like, when, when I was showing the inside, they do have that cavity. They do put cork in there. A lot of other companies either put nothing in there or they put a little bitty layer of foam, but I do like that traditional cork. So they've capitalized on those. These are designed in Texas. They're made down in Mexico. And um, you need to check them out. For, for if you're in the boot market and you're wanting something that's high quality but not going to break the bank, definitely check out Tacova Boots. So if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, hit the bell so you'll get notifications when more videos like this come to you. Until next time, have a good one.